All right, now uh, we're going to talk to Paul Sarabin. He's with the Washington Post. He's written, Don't Expect Obama to Be Superman. We're going to have a very interesting conversation about that. He's also the author of Five Roads to the Future, Power in the Next Global Age. Fascinating. Paul, welcome to the Young Turks. Thank you. All right. Uh, why shouldn't I expect Obama to be Superman? Go. <laughs> because he's a human being. Oh, damn it. I wish somebody told me earlier, man. Yeah. I, I thought Rush was right. I thought he was the Messiah. Well, apparently not. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you think people's expectations are, are, are too large for the president? Uh, I do. I, I also think he's, he's to blame for, for inflating them. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you think he inflated them first? Uh, I think by uh, becoming part of a movement, which was smart politics to become part of, that would su suggested him uh, as a uh, transformative figure in a very kind of profound way, you know, not just our, our politics, but our whole nation after a period that, that many people saw as a very bad, fallow period in American politics under, under Republican rule. Uh, and so uh, this kind of messianic sense of Obama uh, was an organic thing that I think grew out of a genuine yearning for change, but he fostered it. And so in that sense, uh, now I think he is... Um, reaping some of what he has sowed. Well, I agree with that. And, Paul, you know, here's the problem, right? He lied to us during the campaign. Uh, he said that we, he was going to fundamentally change the way the system worked. I mean, that's a bold mm -hmm. statement, right? And he overpromised. I agree with you. Right. And he said that uh, he wasn't going to play the same old Washington games. Um, right. Uh, and instead, uh, you know, he said, oh, in the old days, people just wanted to play the Washington game a little better. I want to change the game, right? So yeah, he comes in I office. never bought that part of it. I, maybe I'm just too cynical because, I, you know, I live I lived in Massachusetts now, but I lived and worked in Washington for years. And, you know, politicians always say they're going to change the culture of, of Washington. It was, you know, it was more believable to me that he might change, you know, broader things in the country. I mean, you know, it's, it's one thing to, to, you know, you can change that, you know, you can change you know the health care system things like that but no washington is always going to have its its sort of insider culture but that's what let's uh, has partly led to this problem I mean, because if we were if we had an honest campaign and i know that's uh, oxymoron right yeah but where uh, hillary and obama both said hey you know what we're going to try to try to bring you a really tiny sliver of change well then i might have voted for hillary because i think she might have done the sliver of change a little better than obama uh, but Obama said, no, 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 I, I'm Superman. I'm, I'm going to change the I system. Know. Well, it's funny because th this was supposed to be, 2008 was supposed to be the competency campaign. Do you remember that? Because mm -hmm. George W. Bush was so widely viewed as incompetent, you know, Katrina and so forth. So Hillary comes with this competency theme and basically just gets blown out of the water by, you know, newcomer Obama, who has his, you know, transformation theme. And that was much more seductive uh, to people, uh, including on the, on, on the left, or, or at least within the Democratic Party, as, as, was, as was shown convincingly by his uh, victory. I mean, you know, na narrow, but, but still, you know, he was the man, and he beat her, and, you know, she was kind of more boring, but, but uh, arguably, with her experience, you know, she, she, you, could, you could make a pretty good case that she'd handle things in the Oval Office uh, better than he has. So let's talk about it issue by issue and see where people, because there are people come at it from different perspectives here. Like, for mm -hmm. example, in, in health care, right? Yeah. Um, it, it goes to that same central problem that we were talking about. Some people say, hey, look, you know, and, and you partly say in this article, Paul, uh, that he, he couldn't change the uh, entire system uh, the, uh, and the way it was. And so to expect that he was going to just overnight with a magic wand change the entire health care system of the United States was too much to expect, right? And, and I yeah. get that, right? I get that. But he did say he was going to do that. He, and then he de mich declared mission accomplished at the end and said, no, no, I, I am the change. We did change health care, and it's now solved. But the problem, again, is I guess overpromising, because when you look at it, he didn't really change the system. He, he got some accomplishments, you know, 32 million more people covered, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But the system remains almost exactly as it was before outside of that. Well, I, th I would say on that one I'd, I'd cut him a little bit of slack because we, we have yet to see really come into play a lot of uh, elements of that legislation, including these, these you know, insurance uh, markets and exchanges that people who lack insurance will be able to participate in. And, you know, I understand there are a lot of people who feel that it's, you know, just going to be another kind of disaster in terms of a government program, but it's really not even off the uh, 
the ground yet. And there were a lot of people on the on the left who really just wanted a, a kind of single payer type system, a la Medicare. And uh, you know, I don't think that Obama really ever promised that, uh, even in the campaign. So in that sense, I don't think he has really violated a pledge. Yeah, no, but the, the the pledge is the same over and over again. I'm going to bring you fundamental change. Mm -hmm. uh, psych, mm -hmm. just kidding. I'm actually going to give you a really small amount of change. Yeah. You know? Well, I agree with that, as as we said at the top, because I think that uh, he did overpromise. I think it was a political thing. It was. It's no doubt something that he, you know, probably believes himself. I mean, you know, anybody who wants to become president is probably a little bit crazy. Uh, because look at the kind, look at the job, and so you have to have this incredible ego, and so maybe he did think that he would become a great, a game or global changer. Part of the argument I make in my book, a lot of which is about sort of the global scene, is just it's very difficult for any president, whether you know whether you're Ronald Reagan on the right or you know Franklin Roosevelt on the left or Barack Obama somewhere you know, closer to FDR, it's just very difficult mm. to kind of, you Walk know, wave that wand and change things. And it's, you know, we're finding that now in places uh, from the Middle East to uh, Afghanistan. I mean, it's just, it's really tough going, and, and people are very impatient, uh, and they're just going to have to kind of stick with it. That, that's sort of my message. And the but, people who really don't like Obama, you know what, they're going to have a chance in uh, a couple of years uh, to vote against him. And, well, but uh, Paul, I mean, I guess that's where I uh, disagree with you a little bit, right? Because, okay. Because uh, I don't <laughs> I think anybody who says, oh, he should have solved the Israeli issue by now. I, I'm not sure anybody does say that because that's crazy talk, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and did he try in the beginning? Yeah, he did. I mean, first of all, the speech in Cairo was fantastic, one of the best speeches I've ever heard in my life. Uh, and then he comes out strong and says no more settlements. Uh, I think he's on the right path, and I'm giving him credit for it. But then when Netanyahu challenged him and said, no, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to bulldoze you, and he got bulldozed. Well, right. It might have been a tactical mistake to go after the settlement issue, even if he's, if he's right in principle, because uh, it's kind of like a, a lawyer who asks a question that he should already know the answer to it. I mean, it should have been predict predicted that, that Netanyahu, as a, his whole political history is as a guy who digs in his heels when, when challenged, very truculent. You know, even Israelis feel that way about him. So there was no way he was ever going to give in to that pledge. It would jeopardize his, 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 his fragile, you know, governing coalition. And Obama and, and the people advising him were, were, uh, should, should have understood that. I agree. Or, or should have had consequences. Say, hey, you know what? I, I don't like what you did, and here's consequences number one. Yeah, but, but he okay, had no then, backup plan. Do, then do we? You're right. He had no backup plan. But you know what? What? I mean, how much do you want to ratchet things up? Uh, I'd like to ratchet them up a lot. Really? Okay. Would you? Would you like to pull their aid? I mean, what would you like to do? Uh, well, <laughs> you, on that note, you're talking to the wrong guy. I would definitely. No, no, pull their I'm, aid. Not, I'm I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm a member of the tribe, but uh, I, I, I've I've often called myself a kind of disillusioned Zionist in some ways. So I am by no means. I, I think there are all kinds of things America do with respect to Israel policy, but it, it it's tough because the Israelis are, you know, they have they feel existential threats in the region and they're going to be pretty truculent and, and it's difficult for America to uh, push them around. Even though uh, we're a lot I don't think it's stronger. I don't think it's difficult at all. I think it's exceedingly simple except we don't want to do it. Um, well, okay, well, would you what would you what okay. would what, we're getting sidetracked a little bit, but it's a fun conversation. Okay, okay, so no, 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 let's, no, no, let's keep it going. Okay, so you, you ask me and I'll tell you. So, uh, look, here's the deal. Uh, when Hamas won the elections uh, mm -hmm. in Palestine, we didn't like it. They won fair and square, but we didn't like it, so there were That's consequences. That's right. I, I, I didn't like that either. I mean, right. we, we were the ones who said there should be an election, and they won. Right, they won, but there were consequences. So we said, all right, look, you're allowed to pick whoever you want, right? But now we're going to pull aid, and we're going to do this, and we're going to do that. Okay, that makes some degree yeah. of sense. Although we really did that more when they kicked out Fatah. Well, they but they, they they got attacked. They they won, yeah. right? And so Fatah yeah. attacked them, which we encouraged. So that yeah. part wasn't right by yeah, on our we side. We did. You're right about that. Okay. So now when Israel has an election, and we don't like the results because they've elected a right winger who is not pro peace and who is not going to help this process and who defies uh, everything we say. Uh, well, then why aren't there consequences? Of course there should be consequences. Look, mm -hmm. it, it's, uh, if we want to help Israel get to the right solution, we have to be able to be a strong friend and say, hey, look, here's what I'm going to do, and, and, and if you react this way, well, then that's a sad day yeah. for you. I'm basically fine with that. I'm not sure what the result will be, but 
uh, I, you know, whenever I'm asked, uh, I mean, somebody just read me a, a different different program, you know, Liz Cheney's statement that America and Israel have identical interests. I, I, I think that's actually kind of ridiculous. It's yeah, absolutely simple, ridiculous. But, yeah. uh, you know, na- nations d- n- virtually never have identical interests. I mean, we have interests. Israel has interests. I would say our, some of our interests are certainly shared, but not identical. So um, America should, should do what is in America's interest that that's what the debate should be absolutely I mean, turkey has been in you know i'm originally uh turkish and now i'm turkish american i know uh, and were you born in turkey yeah i was born in turkey right what so part, what part i was born in istanbul um yeah so, I, i've been there i did some research for the book and i was in Anat- different parts of anatolia and including adana yeah and it's it's a great country and you know it's my original homeland love it sure. etc right and it's a very strong ally of 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 america for a long long time yeah, well, a Cold War thing, I think. Right. Now, is the, you know, is American interest identical to Turkish interest because of that? No. Hell no. Of course not. That's a, that would be a ridiculous thing to say. Right, right. No, right. we agree. Yeah, so, th- so now that, bring that back to Obama, that's why I get frustrated with Obama. Look, if you're going to put your foot down, my God, man, put it down, right? Well, I agree. He did put his foot, th- you should never, in, in life, as, as in, you know, politics, uh, uh, you know, if you're going to play a card, you have to kind of stand behind it. Yeah, and so, look, well, let's do one more issue then uh, to get into some specifics. Now, on the BP oil spill, you know, you yeah. wrote about that in your article, and we're talking to Paul Starobin. He also wrote Five Roads to the Future, Power in the Next Global Age. Um, now, I don't expect him to stop the oil spill overnight. I, I, Good. I, I don't even necessarily expect him to have stopped it by now, right? <laughs> uh, right. And, and, uh, Believe and, me, he could. If he could, he he would. I think I think that's probably right, right? So I don't have these crazy expectations, Good. and and I don't think it's his fault. I think it was BP's fault, right? And Halliburton and Transocean, the people who screwed that up. Yeah. Well, but, there was plus, a, and there was a culture of bad government regulation. Absolutely, that's absolutely right. So here's my expectation, and I think it's a fair one to, for Obama to come out and not get angry or whatever. You know, the right and the left. I guess apparently some people want him to get angry. That's so. No, silly. that's all theater. Yes, theater. I hate that theater. So. But, I hear, but here's what I want him to do. I say, look, uh, I see what went wrong here. It was a $500,000 safety valve, $500,000 right. safety valve that BP, in its infinite greed, decided not to put in. And now right. we're all paying the price. Well, that's right. not going to happen again, okay? So right. now we're going to get tough, okay? And because government has a role. Its role is yeah. to be the cop on the beat. And on yeah. my watch, this doesn't happen again. And here's why, what I'm doing, whether sure. it's at MMS oh, yeah, or absolutely. anything else. Yeah. And it seems like he's blowing that opportunity. It seems like he's yeah. he's not making that right. case. Well, I, I think he was slow off the mark. I, I, I think I, I think that's a fair criticism. I, it seems to be a bit of a character trait in Obama. You know, he's hesitant to sort of just say something so definitive. But he often seems to be just a little bit slow on the uptake for some reasons, which is odd because he's really very intelligent. But he just seems like maybe just because he thinks he has his own agenda. And like this BP oil spill, like it wasn't supposed to happen, right? This is he's supposed to be out there selling his health care plan. He was supposed to be in Indonesia, and it's like this whole thing kind of messed up his life. But you know, that's that's life uh, at the at the at the big you know on top of the mountain, right? I mean, stuff happens, and you have to deal with it. Um, and those but, are yeah, and those are the two problems. In one, he thinks, look, I've got to be proactive, and that's great. But you also have to be reactive. It's part of the job. As you mm-hmm. wrote in your article, you've got to ride the waves a little bit, right? You do. You do. You don't just create. Yeah, and that's, and that's right. I think he, you know, this sense that the world is new and, and uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm the kind of the birth father and all. I mean, that's just nonsense. That's how children think. I have kids. They always think I can fix everything. And I'm like, you know what, guys? Uh, I'm, just, I'm your dad, and I'm going to do the best I am, but, but I'm not God. Right. No, and, and that's that's definitely true. And then the second part of it is he's got to be more assertive. He's got to make his own mm-hmm. case, whether it's for the public option, which he never really believed in, yeah. uh, whether it's for financial reform and the Volcker rule, which now I think is incredibly weak, or whether it's for the government actually having a real role in regulating, you know, whether it's BP or the, or the banks. And it just seems like at every step he's reluctant to make that case and concedes yeah. before there's a real battle. I think, well, you know, I, I hear what you're saying, but, but uh, in many respects, the presidency is, is the power to persuade. I mean, the Congress is a real issue here. I mean, even when you have Democratic majorities, as we do now in the House and in the Senate, particularly in the Senate, uh, it's just very tough on an issue like financial reform. 
uh, you're not going to get a pure kind of political uh, partisan breakdown. And so uh, I hear what you're saying about things like the vocal rule, but to assume that, you know, if Obama had basically uh, made, you know, more big speeches and so forth, and then, you know, uh, I mean, wh- wh- what exactly is he supposed to do I'll with his arms to get that bill over the hump? Absolutely. I'll answer that. See, the problem is in Washington, we have certain assumptions about things that cannot happen, right? So Mm -hmm. in this case, the thing that cannot happen is Obama actually twisting Democrats' arms to be more progressive, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas I think that certainly can happen. It seems like Rahm Emanuel's whole thing is let's get more Democrats elected for the rest of eternity, and that's our job one. But that's not ah, your the job. Bad, the bad Rom right. uh, but no, argument. No, no, and don't get me wrong. I, that doesn't excuse Obama. Obama selected Rahm Emanuel, and he's listening to Rahm Emanuel. So, no, your job one is to get the policy uh, passed. That's why we elected you, right? So I would go to the recalcitrant uh, Republican, I'm sorry, Democratic senators, and I'd say, look, uh, if you're Blanche Lincoln, for example, I can help you or I can hurt you, right? And then uh, you mm-hmm. pick. But Obama would never do that. And, and he does, again, the same thing with the Israeli situation, the same thing with BP. He doesn't put his foot down. He doesn't, and what would I do with Israel? I'd say, look, if you don't listen to me, I give you $3 billion a year. Why should I keep giving you that money? But that seems unthinkable, right? But it's not unthinkable. You just have to be strong. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It sounds a little bit like the, the, the Kobe Bryant or, uh, you know, Will Chamberlain theory of politics. I mean, you can, you know, just, you know, get... Take the ball and go to the hoop. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I just think, I do think, I, I understand what you're saying, but, but um, uh, I, I think the environment is, is l- less easy to, 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 to shape than, than what you're No, 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 I don't think uh, it's which easy. Which isn't to say that Obama, as we've talked about, hasn't made some bad, let's say, tactical calls. But, I mean, it, it's, it's pretty tough. Paul, it, it, look, we've had a great conversation here, and don't t- take me the wrong way. I, I don't think it's easy at all. But if I okay. thought it was easy, maybe I would have taken, again, I, maybe I would have picked Hillary Clinton. Okay. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, that's a, that's, I think that's a very fun debate, you know, which, which is what, what would Hillary have done? Right. I mean, and, and I, I respect that. I mean, you know, maybe do you think she would have been, uh, you know, a lot of people perceive her as, as, as tougher. You think she, she would have been the one basically to kind of kick some butt and not take no for an answer on the Hill? Uh, Paul, I'll tell you this. When I, every time I think about that, I think two things. One, Look, she's a fighter, right? So she she, might, is. she wouldn't have done as much of, oh, please, 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 Republicans, will you like me? Um, but on the other hand, her top advisor was Mark Penn, who doesn't, you know, you couldn't get more establishment. If you don't yeah. like Rahm Emanuel, boy, you'll hate Mark Penn, right? So, you know, so I get torn on that. But what I know is what we got was not what we uh, were promised. Mm-hmm. So that's what's leading to, nobody thinks, on our side at least, that Obama's Superman. But it, you think he's going to get? Uh, it's going to come back to, uh, to 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 shadow him when he gears up for his own reelection. That's probably too much to ask for. Uh, but <laughs> but but I wish somebody would. You know, we don't need him to be Superman, but we need him to be a little strong. Can we get Popeye? You know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, you know, I guess he has to change his diet and eat some spinach. <laughs> I hope so. All right, Paul Starobin. Uh, his book is Five Roads to the Future: of Power in the Next Global Age. Thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Uh, okay, I had that was that was good. Thank you. Thank you. Young Turks.